In this video, I'm going to show a discriminant question that you might see on the IB Math SL exam. Uh, they love to ask these questions on non-calculator parts of the test. So here's a non-calculator question that looks like a quadratic. I can see there's an x squared in it, nothing else going on. But they have this k instead of uh, numbers filled into the function. So we're supposed to find the range of values for k. So k could be anything. Um, and we're looking for a range of values that will give two imaginary solutions to this quadratic equation. So two imaginary solutions for x, but we're asked to find the values for k that would give two imaginary solutions. Um, so basically, anytime you see this, two imaginary solutions or two distinct solutions or two real, oops, two real solutions or one distinct solution, one repeated solution. So when they're giving you information like this, these are discriminant questions. So we're going to go look up our discriminant in our formula booklet, in case you forget what it is. And it's the part that appears underneath the square root sign in the quadratic formula. And so it gives us information because we can't do square roots of negatives. We can do square roots of positives. We should be getting two answers to that, a plus or minus. And the square root of 0 is just 0. There is no such thing as plus or minus 0. So that's how you end up knowing things like that there would be two imaginary solutions or two real solutions. Um, it's because of the number underneath the square root sign uh, being positive, negative, or 0. So if we're looking for two imaginary solutions, that's because the discriminant is negative. So the discriminant being less than 0 is what gives two imaginary solutions. Square roots of negatives are imaginary numbers. So I need to fill in the discriminant formula here and set it less than 0 to solve uh, for the possible values for k that would give imaginary solutions. So it's important to be able to identify that this is a. It's in front of your x squared. This whole thing is b. It's in front of your x multiplied by x. And this whole thing is c, because it is a constant that is added at the end. Now, if we knew what k was, if it was a number like 1, then the constant, of course, would be 4. So because those two things would be like terms if k was filled in, that whole thing is the c value from your a, b, and c. So you need to be able to then say um, b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. And what you will have created by doing the discriminant is less than 0 is a quadratic inequality. So we have only k's now, which means I'll be able to actually solve it. Um, but it's going to be an inequality, which can make these kind of tricky. Um, and sometimes it's greater than 0, in which case that's an inequality as well. And at times you have to set the discriminant equal to 0. That would be if there was one distinct or one repeated solution. That would be discriminant equals 0. Two distinct or two real is discriminant greater than 0. Uh, so here, discriminant is less than 0. So now we're going to have to foil out this squared and get 9 minus 3k minus 3k plus k squared. Right? That's this thing when you've expanded it. And then we have this is negative 8. And then distribute your minus 8. So this would be minus 8k and minus 24. Still less than 0. I'm going to clean up this side of the equation a little bit. k squared. I have minus 14k in the middle. I have a minus 24 and then a positive 9. And now I'm looking to see if I can factor this thing since it's a quadratic and I have to solve it without a calculator. Uh, indeed, they love to give us ones that we can factor when it's the non-calculator part of the test. So it's k minus 15 and k plus 1. You can check by uh, expanding that again and seeing if it gives you the quadratic, which it does. And now we have to somehow solve a quadratic inequality, which is not quite the same as solving a quadratic equation. You know that if you were to solve it with an equal 0, you'd have two solutions. It would be k equals 15 and k equals negative 1. But here we have to somehow deal with this um, less than sign. And that doesn't mean you just get to throw some less than signs on your answer. So it doesn't make sense that k would be less than 15 and less than negative 1. We have to do a little bit of a number line check. So we're going to put a negative 1 on there and a 15 on there. And check, is it this region that works between the negative 1 and 15? Or is it the red region that works um, below the negative 1 and above the 15? It's easiest to just pick a number in the middle. In this case, 0. It's probably the easiest friend to check. And see if it works in the equation, or the inequality, rather. Um, I think it's easiest to plug that value that you just chose in here. So you're plugging in the number you picked for k right here. I'm picking 0 for k. And seeing if that yields a value that is indeed less than 0, 
So 0 minus 15 would be negative 15 times 0 plus 1 would be 1. So that indeed does come out negative, which is less than 0. So this region of values is the region you want to state for your answer, which means I would group this inequality as when k is greater than negative 1 but less than 15, right? We do this as one of the three-headed inequalities to express that it's in between two values. That's when we'll get to imaginary solutions to the original quadratic in this question. And that is all.